Hello dear children welcome to Quest Academy where learning is made simple in today's session we shall be discussing the lesson alchemy of nature taken from english kumar bharti book for standard 10 it has been written by raksha bararia so let us begin raksha bararia is a young indian writer and an editor she is the author of the book me and a handbook of life published in 2006 Roots and Wings in 2008 and All and Nothing in 2018. She is also the co-author of Chicken Soup Indian Soul series. Raksha Baradia is the founder of the website Bonbology. In the beginning of the article, we can read a few lines from the poem Auguries of Innocence written by William Blake. The lines go like this to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour the writer has used the above lines to praise the beauty of the enchanting nature she explains the above lines and says that a tiny grain of sand can sometimes initiate a great idea or imagination we might think that a tiny grain of sand is useless and is hardly of any use but the writer says that if we observe things carefully we understand that the tiniest element in nature has a lot of importance she also adds that if we have an eye for beauty and time we can witness and enjoy the beauty of heaven in a tiny wild flower the writer says that infinity is an endless space but with man's efforts and hard work man can hold the destiny of earth in a small palm eternity as we all know means never ending time according to the writer an hour in a person's life can make a lot of difference to the whole world forever with this the writer highlights the fact that great deeds can surpass the limits of time and space great deeds are never forgotten the writer raksha baradia says that it is our natural instinct to engage ourselves in outdoor activities whenever we are sick and tired of our routine life nature plays a very crucial role at that time nature soothes and nurtures us it means that it reduces our pain and discomfort we feel calm and relaxed in nature's company it provides us with all the things that are essential for our healthy growth and development nature fulfills and motivates us it means that it makes us satisfied by giving us what we expect from it nature motivates us which means that it provides us with a reason to our existence it encourages us to lead a happy and fulfilled life nature whispers and commands one might feel how is that nature speaks to us but if we listen carefully we can feel that it whispers or speaks softly to us it orders us whenever we are doing anything wrong but we human beings in the race to become superior ignore its whispers and ultimately end up paying a heavy price for our foolishness the writer listens to the sound of nature which leaves her in complete awe awe means great wonder and amazement Here she gives us the example of a hibiscus flower. She says that a hibiscus flower blooms once in 15 days in her garden. This flower is big, bright and tender. Throughout the day the hibiscus flower is fresh and sways with the wind. But by the time it is evening it starts wilting. Wilting means drying and drooping. If we see this flower in the next morning the flower withers which means it gets dried and decay and by that evening the flower falls on the ground and gets mixed with the soil 
The hibiscus flower blooms and lasts only for a single day, but still it does this with all its grace. With this example, the author wants to convey to us that we should also live our life to its fullest. We should enjoy each and every day of our life instead of worrying about the future. The next example which the writer shares with us is her visit to a rocky beach where she saw the majestic ocean and huge rocks along the beach. The rocks have been carved and shaped due to the constant hitting of the waves. Here the writer wants to emphasize the fact that though the water is so gentle and the rock is hard, the water dashes on the rocks continuously years after years and change the shape of them. With this example, the writer wants to focus on the fact that though our problems seem to be colossal, that means they might seem to be huge and massive, but if we keep trying, we surely can find solutions to them. Later, the writer talks about small bits of grass which is coming out of the cracks in a concrete pavement. This sight made the writer think that sometimes things might seem to be impossible but there surely is a way out. Next, the writer gives us an example of a tree that had no leaves in the winter season. The writer thought that the tree had died. However, after three months when spring came in, the tree turned green once again. It had green leaves, flowers, birds and life on it. With this example, the writer puts forward her thought that even though we are in a difficult situation right now, it will not remain the same forever. She has the faith that this too shall pass. Once the writer saw some ants carrying a fly. The fly was at least 10 times the size of the ants. However, the ants organized themselves and worked as a team. Their teamwork and constant efforts impressed the writer. She thought that if we humans also get organized and are consistent and focused, we too can achieve great feats. Another example she puts forth is that of a spider web. A spider's web is delicate yet very strong. With this example, the writer wants us to realize that though some people are emotional and delicate, they are strong within. They too can face the adversities of life in the same way as strong people do. Further, the writer talks about the rainbow. She says that the rainbow occurs very occasionally yet it beautifies the sky. In the same way, the stars too appear only during the night time. They too enhance the beauty of the sky. The writer here gives us the message that we should too do such things in our life that people remember us forever. Adding to this, the writer says that an oyster takes in a tiny particle of sand and transforms it into a beautiful pearl. This teaches us the quality of being tolerant and taking pain for creating beautiful things. Next, she talks about the clouds that change their form continuously. The same is the case with trees which sway according to the wish of the wind. They are not stubborn. This teaches us that we should also be flexible and change according to the situation. Water changes its form from solid to liquid and even to gas. It is very flexible. It obeys the orders of the sun and the wind. All these examples teach us that we should not have ego and act according to the situation. The writer finally says that when we see a caterpillar turning into a butterfly and the flower turning into a fruit, 
we experience the alchemy of nature the writer concludes by saying that if we spend some time with nature and have an eye for this beauty we will surely make our lives meaningful with this we come to the end of the explanation i hope this was helpful to you